like the Fonz. Remember him? Last November, I think it was, I, I did a, I was at a symposium with uh, the Pali Institute of uh, Television, and uh, I think of these things offhand, and, and he is probably the Henry Winkler, one of the nicest stars ever, and everybody says that, and fascinating story about his life and everything. But anyway, you're here to hear about me, not about Henry Winkler. But my name's George Geary, and I uh, come to you from my kitchen, and besides, I say this every time, but there's so many new people. I uh, teach all over the country, but today we're coming from the kitchen. And next week I'll be coming from my kitchen for Tampa, so I'll let you know about the NBC station in Tampa. I do uh, morning shows around, across the country, and we can do it remotely, and it's kind of nice. I don't have to travel all the way to Tampa, even though I do like to travel, but now don't want to. But uh, I also write a bunch of books, and um, another book's coming out in February. And the other thing I do is uh, food tours of France, and it's my 33rd, 35th year around in there. And then we also have to introduce our one and only photographer. And you get to see his thumb and fingers and things like that until um, the last day. And then we've got uh, a drink and I let him have an, a, a beverage for the last day on Friday. We're gonna make uh, strawberry, a few strawberry things today. Today is a flourless chocolate tort with raspberries. <laughs> I guess that's a different berry. I'm gonna tell you, you could use strawberries, but you need them to be cut up a lot. And, and this is a very simple recipe, but it has a lot of technique in it, so I'll explain that. Then we're going to do a strawberry ambrosia salad. That uh, ambrosia salad is very southern, and uh, we're going to use some fresh strawberries for that. And then the other thing is strawberries Romanoff, which Romanoff's was a very high-end restaurant that was before Spago's in Hollywood. And Romanoff's uh, Romanoff himself was kind of a swindler, and uh, he uh, kind of said that uh, he was like a, a czar of somebody or other. And this before the internet, so nobody could uh, really find out if these are truths or not. So he was nobody, but he was in a few television and movie shows over the years. And uh, looking into research, because it's in my Hollywood book, he uh, was put in jail a couple nights before his restaurant was to open in Hollywood, and, or no, in Beverly Hills, and uh, W.C. Fields uh, gave uh, the bail money. So uh, he's got a little bit of star power there. Uh, this recipe only has three ingredients, and uh, we add a fourth, so, and the fourth is the berries, or strawberries, or something like that, but we're going to do the raspberries and chop them up. We've got eggs that we warm up. We don't want them into the refrigerator, so I've got a, a, a kind of a warm water, not hot, and I'm just going to uh, drain the water off. And then we have uh, seven, uh, some butter. Now, I used nine ounces of butter, and what was funny is somebody in one of my classes, they said, I only used eight, and it worked fine. Do what I tell you, and then play around with it, uh, because we're using uh, almost two pounds, well, a pound and a half of really good semi-sweet chocolate, and I'm using Belgian chocolate. You can use any kind you want. I stick, I, I think the lowest grade you should use is probably, and it's not bad, is the Trader Joe's Pound Plus Bar. And that's almost a whole pound of uh, the recipe. So I take the chocolate and the butter, and I put it, I'm putting the, uh, uh, the butter and the chocolate over here. Oh, look at that, Neil. You'll want to, <laughs> Neil likes to lick the bowl, and I got a little chocolate on there, so I'll put it on the <laughs> side. I'm, I know I'm all the way back here, but I'm going to do that right now instead of over there because I got the mixer. And how you melt chocolate, there's two things, two types of chocolate, milks and darks. Unsweetened, semi-sweet, and bittersweet chocolate. Those are melted one way, and milk chocolate and white chocolate are melted another way. So this is how we do it. Right now, you can see I've got, uh, this is a double boiler, and I don't use a regular double boiler, I use a bowl and a pan of water. The water's rippling. This is for the darks. All those darks I explained. The steam is going up. I try not to have too much steam because the steam might fall into the, uh, the chocolate. So a low boil, rippling, and that's it for the darks. Now with the whites or milks, what you do is you 
bring the water to a boil, turn it off, and put the chocolate on top at that point. Chocolate melts at body temperature. You can do it with the darks that way too, but it takes a little longer. So what I've done is I've got the chocolate in here and the butter. And when I do this in class, I like to ask people, what melts first, chocolate or butter? Do you know, Neil? Uh, butter. Everyone thinks butter. Butter is higher than uh, the, your body temperature. Remember I said body temperature, 97.8 oh. or something. What is it, 97.9? 97.8. So 97.9 uh, is a radio station, right? Yes. So 97.8 is body temperature, and butter takes a little bit hotter. So when you put chocolate and butter in here together, the chocolate melts first and you'll still have pieces of butter. Interesting, don't you think? Neil does Absolutely. not believe that. I'm going to Google the body temperature. I want to make oh, sure the exact I, I body temperature. I want to make sure we haven't told people something wrong. Well, it's 98.7, 98.6. Huh. What's the answer? I could ask Alexa. Hey, Alexa, what's the body temperature of a normal person? Thank you, Alexa. Thank you. <laughs> she goes on if we don't put a stop to her. She really does. She. <laughs> oh, she. Thank now you. she's being nice. <laughs> Hope you have a good Tuesday. All right. The other thing with this is we do a cheesecake pan. We do the parchment paper on the bottom, and we have a piece of foil close by. This only bakes for 15 minutes, and we have a pan of hot water that's going to go on the first rack and the tort goes on the second. Do you know the difference between a tort and a cake? Do you know uh, Neil? No, Neil does not no cook baking whatsoever. baking powder? Or no is... baking powder. What do I have here that we don't? Flour. Flour. That's it. Yeah. No flour. So anyway, we're going to put this in the oven on the first rack and, or the bottom rack closest and our oven is at 425 degrees. What that does is that that's creating steam. So that's what I'm doing. Now my eggs. This is the part that takes the longest. We're gonna crack our eggs into each. I'm trying not to get any shell. One-handed egg cracker. Oh, I teach this on the ships how to do that. I should have done that. Crack on one hand. Let me teach you real quick. Normally I bring someone up from the audience to do this and everyone gets all excited. So what you do is you hold it like that. Technically, you crack here like that. Then you can put your thumb where the crack was and you're gonna act like this is a hinge. So I'll do slow motion. Do you wanna do a close up of the slow motion? Okay. Keep in mind, I haven't had a manicure because they aren't open. So here we go. Crack, put your thumb in. This is slow motion, so it's not gonna look as nice. Open up and this is a hinge like that. Beautiful. And there's our seventh egg. We're going to turn that on high. Now what happens is, is the eggs, because they're warmed up and they're cold, they'll rise up fast. It'll, take, it'll triple in volume. And uh, what I did is I, uh, let me get a large bowl. Get a large bowl. So you can see this. Making sure our butter and our chocolate is all melted. And uh, I've been making the same tort for probably 30 years. And I think. When you have the best ingredients, you'll have really a good uh, flavor with that chocolate and the raspberry. And uh, the very first time I did this, I went to a, a house in uh, San Diego. It was a fundraiser. And um, I uh, was asked to do a chocolate presentation, and I did. And there was about 12, 18 people there. So I go ahead and I'm doing the, the, the presentation. And I made one ahead because 
you really should make it a day before when you're going to do this. So what I did is I made it ahead, I had, it, I had the perfect one, showed up, demonstrated, and I left the new one in the freezer for the owner. So about a week later, the owner calls me up and she says, I want you to know that your torch fed a family of six for a whole month. And I said, well, how'd that happen? She says, well, what happened was, is because they do fundraisers, this group that I, I helped out, they, uh, they decided to do another fundraiser because there was a family that owned a house that their butane tank blew up and it caught fire the whole house, the butane from uh, the barbecue. And so she, uh, she called to tell me that the group that had been at the party the week before, they all got together and they're saying, how can we raise some more money? We just raised money, we gave it out, and uh, George was great, but there's no way we can do this. And, and they have about 18 people at this uh, meeting for fundraising. So one person said, well, we should have some coffee. Don't you have that chocolate torque from when George was here? She goes, yeah, let me get it. So she cuts it into 12 slices. There's 18 people there. She comes out and she says, we're going to auction off each piece. And some of you aren't going to get any. And so they auctioned it. They made enough money to not have to have a fundraiser because they all knew how good this tort was. The other thing was, is the last two pieces, after someone bought it, they started auctioning bites off. So it was just, I mean, I thought it was a great, fascinating way, and I didn't have to go and do another fundraiser. But it was cute in how they did it. So they, uh, this whole, this torque will feed a family for a whole week. So now let's get back to the torque. We've got the egg, eggs in here. The only sugar is really in that chocolate, and we have the butter. Oh, somebody else made this using butter flavored Crisco. Don't do it. I don't even think butter flavored Crisco should be used for even pies. So don't do it. And then we have our raspberries. After we get those three things together, we're going to put them in here. We've got the water below. This will be up on top. We're going to set a timer for five minutes. I'm going to check my, did I said this? Yeah, five minutes. And then we're going to put a piece of foil on top of the cake, just loosely like that, while it's in the oven for another 10 minutes. After that, we take it out and we let it cool down. If you don't remember the foil, the whole top of the torch will be dry looking. If that happens, you can put whipped cream on top and it'll still work. Now, if you want to put some liqueur into it, you can do one tablespoon only, which it doesn't really help, but if you want to do liqueur, you can put a tablespoon. If you want to use liqueur after it's done, you can uh, pour a little bit on top of the torch. This torch, you can serve it hard, like almost a, a, a out of the freezer, and it's really uh, dense. Or you can do room temperature, or you can even microwave it for five seconds each slice, and the inside will be melting. So you have different ways of doing this. And uh, let's see how we're doing. It's noisy, isn't it? But I think you can hear over me, right? All right, so let's see how our butter's doing. I think this is ready to go. So, I'll bring this over here. Whenever I'm doing chocolate melting, you know I've got butter in it. The whole thing's very warm. So I try to wipe the butter. The, got a few little pieces of chocolate, and I mean butter. Like I said, I've got to put it all in here so you can see. I'm going to whisk that butter in there. So we melt that last bit of chocolate. Uh, I keep saying melting chocolate, the butter. And the uh, eggs take about five minutes. So that looks good. this all in here. When I was in culinary school, 
and I do chocolate stuff at my parents' house. Woo, hot. I would, uh, my mother would find chocolate dripping from the ceiling. And now our housekeeper finds it. <laughs> okay. So, Neil, do you want to do a close up of this? And the chocolate, and the. So you can see what that looks like. See how that fluffs up? It's almost like meringue, and that's all it is is full eggs. And then we've got our chocolate. Now, with this, what I want to do, that chocolate's still a little warm, but I'm going to put up the side so it cools down a little bit more. And I put it in a new bowl. I didn't use that first bowl because that first bowl is very warm. Now I'm going to take about a third to a half by itself and stir it in. I'm not really worried about it. I'm just stirring, blending it. Smells so good. I haven't made this tort in so long, and it is so good and one of my favorites. And it's not in any of my books. I don't know why I haven't put this in the books. Oh. I never think of this to put in the books because people say, "Oh, which book is that one in?" It's not there. All right, now we lightened up the chocolate and cooled it, and you can see it's got some nice texture in it. Now I'm going to take. And what's left of here, about half of it. And I'm gonna fold this. So we take a flat spatula, go in the dead center and up and up. And I rotate the bowl while I'm doing this. And I do this to keep the texture and the air in the whole thing. Then I bring it around, bring it around until it gets all the dark chocolate. And bring it around. And I do the rest. Clean up all of that. Yes, it takes seven eggs. People are like, wow, that's a lot of eggs. Well, that's only a half an egg per person if you feed 14 people. So it's not that much. And the amount of chocolate is over a pound, so it's only about three ounces of chocolate per person. So just like that. So see how I'm going from the center, cleaning the edge. Center, cleaning the edge. Then what we'll do is we will put our raspberries in, and then we'll have the raspberry. It does smell really good. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Neil's thinking, oh, I get to lick that bowl. He can't get, get eat that cake, too. He can't get all of the out of the side, sides, you know, the bowl has the rings in it. Okay, so now we have our raspberries, and we'll put those in. And this is a real dense cake, so the raspberries sink a little bit. It's not like a regular cake where I'm worried about it, but see how we put all the, just toss them around there. And then we'll put them, get all in here. And then I'm going to take a, a, this spatula and kind of straighten, make sure the tort is all around the edges. Boy, Neil, I think, is excited. <laughs> <laughs> so my grandmother could have scraped that completely clean because my aunt and my father, I might have said this story, but my grandmother, when I was growing up, I, she never had anything in the bowl for us to lick because my aunt and my dad were able to lick the bowl and they both fought one day and broke her mixing bowl. So, that was that. she got mad. Alrighty, so what we're gonna do, like I said, five minutes, make sure you put a timer on. Five minutes, foil, another 10, and then we'll come back. So we'll be right back to show you what it looks like. Welcome back. We're doing uh, Strawberries Romanoff. And uh, like I said, Romanoff's was a restaurant that's highlighted in my Hollywood book. In fact, it was really popular. Swifty Lazar was a uh, publicist and he would have his big Oscar parties there. Then he switched over to Spago's on Sunset. 
So um, what I'm doing is, uh, these are really good berries. They're uh, Driscoll berries. I used to work for Driscoll. But you can see they're heart-shaped, we call it, and all the way up to the top, they're red. It's not, they haven't been picked at uh, off season. And um, I'm just cutting them in quarters because they're kind of large. And this is a perfect dessert for summer where there's not a whole lot to it. And uh, we're gonna take all of our berries. I'm just making a, a two uh, servings. And we've got oranges and we've got some orange liqueur. And if you don't like or you don't want the orange liqueur, you can go ahead and switch over to uh, orange juice, which we do need a little bit of orange juice there. Whenever I'm gonna take a, um, to juice something and I need some zest also, I zest it first, then I juice it. Here I only need a little bit of the orange zest. So I'll take, now let's just kind of look. How much zest up? About half of an orange, about a teaspoon. And uh, now this really was a dessert from France. Escoffier, the uh, famous, chef did it but Romanoff like I told you was kind of a swindler and he sold things and he said that it was his so he wanted this to be called strawberries Romanoff and that's what it was but uh, really it's an old French recipe of fresh berries orange and there's some orange juice there and then we do a little bit of Grand Meunier and just a few tablespoons of Grand Meunier. But it's interesting how, oh, and a little bit of sugar, just in case the berries aren't sweet enough, a few tablespoons of sugar, and we'll toss that around. And let me get a big spoon and we'll spoon this out. And remember, all the recipes are on the website. And uh, we've got, where's my spoon? So they, they're just coated with some of the orange. They aren't completely dripping in orange. But the aroma of the Grand Meunier and the orange is just beautiful. And you can take, sometimes you can put some whipped cream on top, or you can take a little bit of, uh, oh, what do you call it, um, ice cream if you want. I made enough for two, but the recipe calls for four. And there you go. Neil, you want to get a close-up, and I will put some whipped cream and a mint leaf on this. Let me get a mint leaf. I got some mint. Yep, got some mint. It does smell really nice. It doesn't smell good? Mm -hmm. And I can see the orange zest on the strawberries. So a little bit of whipped cream. Mm. A little mint. And our second one. Yes, I use the can of whipped cream, but it's only for you. So there is our strawberries Romanoff. So there we go. Whoop, as I have a piece of mint on my thumb. So there we go. And uh, we'll be back to do our ambrosia salad in just a few minutes. So we've got our tort. And then we have our ambrosia salad that I'm doing next. I'm slicing some berries up again into quarters. And ambrosia salads are something you take to a potluck. Uh, they're tasty, but you never hear fresh fruit. Um, you normally, my mom would make a five cup salad. And we call it patty salad because it's my little sister's favorite thing. And it would just be five things, a cup of each and sour cream, marshmallows, coconut, mandarin oranges, and pineapple. I think that was all five. Was that five? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that type of recipe and changing it up with berries, strawberries being the prime uh, flavor, and then we've got marshmallows, of course. Instead of sour cream, we're using uh, Greek yogurt. I'm not trying to be healthy, but that's what we got. We got blackberries or blueberries, either one. So we'll toss those in. We've got our marshmallows. 
And we do have the mandarin oranges, and I've already drained them once. Let me drain it again. So there's our mandarin oranges, coconut, and well, might as well do the. I don't need all the black berries or more. And we've got our Greek yogurt, and we'll put that in here, and we'll toss this around, and. This tastes a lot better after it's been sitting for a minute, but it's really colorful. And we've got uh, Father's Day this weekend, and it's a nice little fruit salad. I also like to put some uh, pistachios in here, and uh, you'll do that last. You won't let it sit, the pistachios, in here until you're ready to serve it, because the pistachios will get kind of soggy. We don't want that. So let me dish this up so you can see it and it's really pretty with all the colors as I get it on the side of the dish yeah, clean it up boop, boop. <laughs> so, there is our ambrosia salad my spoon is too big but remember I'm a professional I keep telling myself that Just like that. Should get a close up. And then, yeah, let's do a close up and let me put a little mint leaf. Mint, yeah, a little green on these always looks nice because it just gives a little contrast of the whole thing. Oop. There we go. Beautiful. So, there is our ambrosia salad. We'll be back to uh, finish up the uh, tort so you can see what it looks like in a plate and we'll be coming back in just a few minutes. All right, the timer just went off on that last 10 minutes of the tort. So let me bring it over here. I put that, see how it's still? But do a close up Neil, because people have thought it's raw. But you'll see how wet it looks and dry against the edges. And if I wiggle it, it does wiggle. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. So, I'll let this cool. All right, we're back. We're gonna take that flourless chocolate torte with the raspberry and put it on our cake plate. And a lot of people are worried about how you do this. So I want to show you. First, you need a board that's a little bit larger than your plate itself. So you're gonna take that upside down. Now, this is a cheesecake pan, not a spring form. There's a difference. If you have any of my cheesecake books, I go into a lot of detail. The spring form will rip cakes and cheesecake pans work perfectly. So you take the metal off and see the paper sometimes comes off, sometimes you have to dig it out. Just like that. Make sure you have your hands clean. Take your cake plate right on top and hold it underneath and flap it. Just like that. And there, oh, that looks great on the red plate, doesn't it? This is new. It's, it was one of my birthday gifts. All right, now we're going to do um, a little uh, pattern on top. This is a way that you don't have to use whipped cream, just a little powdered sugar and keep. You can take a piece of paper and cut a beautiful design out. Just do this. Make sure you get a lot of powdered sugar on here. In. You have to do it like that or it doesn't work. Then pick it up straight. And there you have your design, just like that. So Neil will do a close up of that. Is that cool? Beautiful. And these, uh, you just take a piece of plastic and use an X-Acto knife, do a little design work if you want. I've got a bunch of different designs, but I'd like to thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I hope to see you tomorrow when we have another class and a whole uh, another uh, couple of recipes. And uh, be safe, have a good time, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Thanks a lot.